Uh, good morning. I will now call to order the Board of County Commissioners policy session. Gary, what's up first? Uh, thank you, Chair Smith. All commissioners are present. Your first policy session today is 2022 Small Grants Recommendation. Caroline Hill from County Administration will present. Please come on up, Caroline. Please introduce yourself. <clears throat> Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Administrator Smith. My name is Caroline Hill, and I'm here to present the 2022 Small Grant Recommendations. This is the 14th year of the program, and this year the Budget Committee approved $250,000 for this. We continue to make efforts to improve the program. This year we switched from an online application to a fillable PDF. We worked to increase awareness of, of, the, of the program. <clears throat> offered an application workshop, and we had 56 viewers while live, but more came back to visit the, the website. <clears throat> Created vi videos starring a couple commissioners. Thank you, Commissioners Fisher and Savas for helping us with that. And PGA worked to increase our social media push. This year, we received um, 64 applications for a total of $831,233.72. Last year, we received 69 applications for a total of $759,990.40. Of the 64 applications we received this year, 21 were new applicants. Today, I would like to highlight the impact that the small grants have had over the years. In your staff report, you will find a table that lists the numbers of applicants and amounts requested over the years. Over the lifetime of the program, including this year, the BCC has allocated $3,250,000. And if the recommendations are approved today as presented, we will have awarded 472 grants. A committee was formed to review the applications and formulate these recommendations. The committee re included Christina Fenrecht, Commission Policy Advisor, Karen Burek, Planning Manager from DTD, Trent Wilson, Senior Policy Performance and Research Analyst from PGA, and Jennifer, Jennifer Hartnett, Program Planner from our Equity and Inclusion Office, and myself. Second. Today we're asking you to appro approve option one, to approve the 2022 small grants recommendations as presented. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, commissioners, uh, we have some attachments. Recommendations, organizations, um, thank you for your work on this. I know a, a lot of thought and compassion and consideration has gone into this. You and your team uh, have made a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. Commissioners, do we have any comments? Commissioner Scholl. Yes, thank you, uh, Caroline, for your work on this. Um, I noticed on the um, section of uh, grant requests that were not recommended for funding. Mm -hmm. Many of them receive money from other Clackamas County sources. Is that correct? That is correct. In is fact, that, was that one of your criteria for selecting yeah. your recommendations for this year? That is correct. We actually gave more priority to those who were not already receiving funds from mm -hmm. other departments or that had not received a small grant in the past. Mm -hmm. And the other question is, um, these nonprofits, they range from uh, housing support, food support, uh, many different types of uh, support to the county. Did you have, did you consciously go through here and try to give grants to an array of different types of nonprofits doing different things for the county? Or did you have a focus on certain functions that you were trying to, uh, that you recommended grants for? Over the years, we have made a point of um, awarding grants to as many different organizations as possible and also to cover as much of the county as possible. So, you know, north, south, everywhere. This year, however, we did um, start a scoring mechanism that allowed us to try to be a little bit less um, subjective uh, while reviewing the applications. So 
we were looking at geographic areas, strength of application, among other things. Yeah, okay, so my final question is, if we approve the list of recommended grants, mm -hmm. is that gonna, because I, I, I can't really tell where they're located, will that, will that give a spread of grants across the county from north, south, east, and west, yes. so everybody benefits a little bit? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you, that's all my questions. Uh, Caroline, yeah. what is the largest grant you've ever given? The maximum amount is 15000 Okay. Because I see some requests have come in for over double that. Yeah. And I understand why you would not want to give a huge amount of money like that. But a lot of these uh, grant um, awards, <clears throat> I mean, 5-5, five, five, there is a 15, there's a 13, a 54, a 10, and so um, some of these um, awards are at the maximum amount. Right. Can you explain to me why some groups get 15 and some get five? Yes. Uh, the ones that get 15, they request 15,000. And in their budget, they prove that they're going to be they're in need of those 15,000 and they have a way of utilizing them and prove to us the impact that it will, it will have in the community. The ones that are receiving less is because they're asking for less uh, dollars and they have a specific plan for what they want to use, say the $5,000 or $6,500. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, wow, this is a lot of great work and it's really great to see that there's organizations on here that I'm not aware of, which no. is great. No so, nonprofits, yes. So I was excited to see all this compiled, and I am going to want to steal a little bit of your time just to learn a little bit more about the organizations that I'm not familiar sure. with. won't take the time here. But one question I had, I do notice that there that Estacada and Canby, um, there are programs within those areas that are included here. Yeah. I'm curious if that is because of the sort of the lens from the prosperity collaboratives of looking at where the, some of the areas of most need are across Clackamas County. That is correct. That was one of the criteria that we used in a score mechanism. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. yeah just Mr. To, uh, Savas. Yeah, I just want to make a comment. I've been through this several years and Caroline thank you for your good work on this I know it's hard probably to number one do the work and um, also realize that you know the people that get the grants this round uh, maybe didn't get them last round right. and there's a lot we have been, had to decline because there's only so much money mm -hmm. and I look at some of these organizations and you know similar to Commissioner Fisher there are some here that are new to me um, I do like um, the fact that we're spreading it around and most more significantly uh, what I wanted to convey today is that this is one of the rare opportunities to push a little bit of money out to the rural areas that don't really seem to, to have the eligibility because of the there's the funding mechanism sometimes are closer in the urban area than they are so I know there's need out there in the rural areas whether they're unincorporated or whether within the rural cities but I'm glad to see that we're distributing that around and hopefully some of the, I'm looking at some of the people that did not win the award that I'm, a, I'm aware of and um, for their purposes. And there's just a lot of good work out there. And my, I just want to, excuse me, acknowledge all the, um, the volunteers and the nonprofits and these people for their, for their work and their compassion. Um, and they're all doing a lot of good work. So it's unfortunate we can't, with this particular allotment, you know, do it all. But, um, we're, we're out there trying. We're yes. doing the best we can, and, and there's more opportunities around the corner as well. Yeah. So thank you, Caroline. You're welcome. Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, thanks so much for all this hard work. I uh, really am glad to see that the rural communities are um, getting uh, some of the dollars they need because I think we forget sometimes because we deal so much with what we're, um, you know, the difficulties in our urban areas. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that there are significant pockets of poverty out there in the rural areas. Um, to piggyback on that, I was um, going to mention something, Gary, and I'll bring this up under issues. Uh, re recently as well got um, information from Greater Portland, Inc. The legislature uh, established the Oregon Rural Capacity Fund. 
HB 2345 to assist cities, school districts in obtaining grants and other uh, funds. And Greater Portland Inc. has partnered with Colpac to assist designated rural entities in our region. So I know that we are rebuilding um, our economic development program, but this is a real opportunity uh, to piggyback on what we've been doing with our grants as well to see if we can funnel some additional, uh, additional dollars out to our rural areas. So, and I just wanted to point out that is one of the, that is one of the positives of being a part of Greater Portland Inc., I think. So thank you for that. So Gary, I'll get this to you and Maybe, uh, Caroline, you can get involved in it since you know, you know, we'll let Gary decide, obviously. Yes, yeah, sure. But, okay. Some of the areas that have been awarded, <coughs> I'm just going to read from the list, North Clackamas, Estacada, Camby, Clackamas County in general, Lake Oswego, West Lind, Wilsonville, Tualatin, Sandy, Estacada Bull Run, Eagle Creek, Colton, Boring, Milwaukee, Oregon City, some of these are repeats in the area, but not a repeat of the program. Mm -hmm. um, North Clackamas, North Clackamas. I just want to make mention almost all sectors, almost all, not all of them, all sectors receive grants and maybe they didn't apply. So <clears throat> thank you for that. Yeah. Gary, <clears throat> do I entertain a motion on this? Yes, please. Commissioners, I'm open to a motion. I move to approve. The 2022 small grants recommendation from staff. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved to approve the 2022 small grants recommended as presented. Commissioner <coughs> Fisher has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much, Caroline, for your work. Keep it up, and we'll just keep our ear to the ground for community input. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Yes. Gary? Thank you. The next policy session is American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, project update and seeking your direction on capital projects only. Nancy Bush, County Operating Officer, is the lead of ARPA here at the county, and she will present today. And Gary, do we have a guest in the room? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, we have the Mayor of Gladstone, Tammy Stemple. Mayor Stemple, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, welcome, and, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Nancy, please introduce yourself and go ahead. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. My name is Nancy Bush, and I'm the County Operations Officer, and we're going to be talking about ARPA today. As Gary said, um, this is about our capital projects only that were on the list, which was the um, direction that we had from the board at the last meeting that we had, was which, which was in late July. Before I get started with the list, I would just talk to uh, talk about a couple things, kind of set the stage just a little bit. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today are capital projects. You will note on the spreadsheet that you have in your packet, there is a statement there that we have to go through assessments for each of these projects um, as they develop and move forward. Some of them have more work to do than others, and I'll talk about that as I get to them. But so the, the number that you're seeing on some of these probably is a cap rather than the number that we might be able to spend on that project. And I will give examples of that as I move forward. But I'm hoping that makes sense before I get to that. Does anyone have questions on that? Go ahead with your presentation, okay. and we're going to right. uh, have questions at the end. Okay, thank you. So as you see there, the full grant award is 81 million, a little over 81 million, and so far we have over $40,000, or 40, 000, 40 million that has been um, dedicated to projects. We now have almost $41 million that are available. So I'm going to go to um, the sheet, the spreadsheet now, and just go down the list of projects there. So first we have uh, the Fairgrounds Multipurpose Facility. Right now, the, the uh, ask there is $4.8 million, um, and these are numbers that we have just received. Um, this particular project still has a lot that we would have to flesh out. The uh, venue is for vaccine clinics, other in the, which makes it eligible. This was a facility that actually was used for vaccine clinics even before COVID happened. So that is definitely something, the multi-purpose building definitely is something that we would be able to use the, the funding for. Um, 
this also would have to comply with our capital projects, which we feel that it does. And um, again, we would need written justification. There would be a lot of assessment we would need to do there because as we work with the fair board on that. So next we have uh, Dep Department of Transportation and Development in the Gladstone Library. We have $6 million there. Um, this is a project that is eligible. It falls within the qualified census tract. It also uh, provides services and education and literacy to student populations fa facing negative impacts from COVID. It also can provide broadband centrality to enhance education. And again, as we move forward, we'd have to work on an assessment for that as well. The next is Oak Lodge Library. We have $9 million there. This is the one where I think we need to look at as a cap. Um, there are certain things, both libraries, that you can't pay for the whole library, for example. So anything that's administrative, we can't pay for it with ARPA dollars, for example. So there's a lot of assessment to do with the libraries as we do more around what are we doing, what does the planning look like, what is the use, et cetera. So the nine million there, for example, let's say there's only 800, 8,500,000 then 500,000 would have to go back into the ARPA pot. Does that make sense? No, explain that again, So please. if, <clears throat> so for example, we have 9 million, right? We're saying that we're gonna put 9 million into this project maximum. <coughs> but if we do the assessment and we find out that, oh, we can only put 8.5 because ARPA doesn't pay for everything, then we would have to put the 500,000 back. I see, okay. okay. So, yes. Ahead. So, um, but this one, the nine million, we think is really a cap there. And as we get into the project more, we would know more about if we could spend that whole nine million dollars. But it does qualify for the same reasons that the Gladstone Library does. Uh, the next project is the El Camino Way flooding storm drainage system. Um, this is a DTD project. This is eligible under the water and sewer infrastructure. That particular part of the ARPA guidance is um, pretty open. So anything with storm water, drinking water, anything that may have a climate change impact is eligible. So that is also true for the uh, West projects. You see the three West projects on the next page. Those are also eligible for the same reasons. The first one is Clackamas Road drainage infrastructure, which is $508,400. The Aldercrest is $1,865,013, and Thais and Culvert is $801,635. All of those are eligible for the same reasons. Um, the next page on the Health, Housing, and Human Services, the WIC Clinic. That um, Right now we have $900,000 for the WIC move. Um, this is eligible because of it's good, they're going to be able to expand services and also get them into a new facility, an updated facility. It is also can support the courthouse, but it really is eligible for those two reasons I just said. We can't say it's eligible for the courthouse, but it does help with the courthouse expenses. Um, health, Housing, and Human Services, the Behavioral Health <coughs> Center relocation. Um, that is also true there. That's $2 million to help them move to a new location, which where they will be able to expand services. And also the place that they're going to is more accessible to the clients. So that too is um, in support of the courthouse, but that's not why it is eligible. I wanna make sure that's clear. And last, we have the C-800 Communications Towers, which um, I put under county administration since we've been working on that a great deal with C-800. Um, and this is to finish the towers that we have on the Mount Hood area, Estacada, um, and get those towers up and finished. Um, this, there is a, there still is, they're still working on other funding, but this would also help with that funding there for those towers and get them finished and up. They are eligible because they're supportive law enforcement, um, which, and actually they really, they actually mentioned towers in the, in the guidance. So that is what I have for your presentation today. We do have a um, <clears throat> recommendation that you fully allocate the, uh, the capital projects with the ARPA dollars that we presented here today. Okay, uh, just uh, some comments on here. Um, if we accept these, I hope we do, there will still be remaining 12 million 
$107 of ARPA funds yes, to go out, and we will consider that later. This is mainly capital construction projects. I want to address quickly <coughs> the WIC and the behavioral centers uh, that we're putting money uh, toward. Those uh, facilities will be expanded and we will be able to increase capacity on both those programs? Yes, on the WIC project, it would be, it's getting them updated facilities as well as they will be able to expand services. Okay, and behavior health, we know that's a huge issue with our, with our homeless population, population. Mental health, uh, even if you're not homeless, we've had since COVID, during COVID, coming out of COVID, uh, a lot of has happened in our behavior health area, and yes. uh, a, a new location has been identified, correct? Yeah, yes, a new location has been identified, and we're working on the lease at this time. And that facility will be expanded as well? Yes, they will be, yes, they will be able to expand their services yeah, at the new double, facility. Double what they have now? I am not sure about that. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I know that they can expand services. I don't know if it's double. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, commissioners uh, have comments. Commissioner Savas and then Commissioner, um, go ahead. Uh, uh, I do have a, I, I see that Greg's in the room. Yes, Is there an opportunity I, I have to maybe, guests with me. <laughs> maybe ask uh, individual sure. questions on some of these. Yeah, sure. So I, um, Greg is Greg Geis with Water Environmental Services. Thank you for coming up. Uh, my question is, uh, you and I have had conversations about some of these projects, um, Aldercrest, El Camino Way, Southeast Clackamas Road, and Thiessen. I, I, I believe I understand El Camino Way pretty well, so I mean, it's more of a DTD project than it is a West, but it's still water related. Um, so, but I'm, I'm fuzzy, it's not clear here what the um, Clackamas Road, um, Thiessen, um, Aldercrest is, is it, is it, I guess maybe the simple question is, is it going to resolve the, the substantial portion of the flooding that those folks are experiencing today? We believe it will. So uh, as you know, there's, we recently completed a storm system master plan, uh, the first ever for Wes, frankly, uh, and we're going to be presenting that to the board um, on the 18th. On uh, when? Excuse me? When? Uh, the 18th okay. of this month. Speak and, louder, sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so five of the top 10 projects in that storm system master plan are in this area to solve that problem. The top three of those five are included in this package. Okay. Now what people probably don't know, and I just want to just clarify, just get more clarification. What people don't know about this area is some of it's kind of a wetlands, it's a very low lo mm -hmm. line area. And then up on the ledge, up on top, up high, on, which is really the Oatfield Ridge, there's under, under heavy rains, there's a water that's coming down yes. and is falling in this area as well, adding to the problem. So when I s met with you on site and I met with... Ron. Yeah, Ron. Uh, you were explaining to me that part of this fix is to capture that water and and pipe it into the, you know, across Thiessen and into that, that drainage, that, that creek, the creek, Aldercrest Creek. I don't believe it's across Thiessen. Thiessen's farther downstream. Okay. It'd be across Clackamas Road. Okay. Or Clackamas Drive, sorry. All right. So that does, re that does remedy that? Yes. Address that. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Savas. Commissioner Scholl? Yes, Mr. Geist, um, can you explain for the record why this amount isn't paid through normal WES uh, fees for service? Well, so like I said, we, we're going to be presenting a storm system master plan on the 18th. We're going to follow that. That's an informational item. We want you to understand what our five-year capital improvement plan is based on, uh, which we'll be bringing to the board in <coughs> hopefully maybe December, January, February at the latest. Um, and that would have an associated fee rate projection associated with it. So we have a package of capital projects. Like I said, there's a top 10. Um, and we would need to fund those projects. So the board could choose to use ARPA dollars now and, and kickstart this this work, or we then we would or we would need to have a conversation about funding these projects through rates moving forward, which would probably be a longer term endeavor. So if we can knock these three off the top, then we're talking about funding the other two rather than all five. Okay, I understand. Thank you. 
Yeah, I like, particularly like these. <clears throat> as our population expands, we have more infill as legislation from our legislature has mandated more infill into these areas. This, is a, this will become a huger problem if we don't address it, and thank you uh, for making this board aware. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, one of my questions was what Commissioner Scholl asked, and then my next question, because I'm not in the weeds on this, as some members of the board are because they've been the liaison to Wes. I'm interested, I mean, I would prefer to look at these in the context of all of the WES projects and the overall system plan and bump these for that conversation, because I would really like to understand where exactly this is. I mean, I know it says Southeast Clackamas Road drainage infrastructure, but Clackamas Road is pretty large. I don't know really what's happening there. Or the Aldercrest culvert. I don't have a context of actually what we're looking at. And these are significant dollars. And I would really like to know, well, what are the funding options? Because if we do have an option, to fund these in another way, then I think we should consider that before we just approve um, the ARPA dollars. Because we do know that there are a lot of non-construction requests with, I think the total is a 15, uh, the total up to 15 million, which exceeds what um, we would have available if we funded all of these projects. So I don't know if you can answer any of that or give any thoughts well, about I, I, it. Well, I do have a, a map that I, that shows precisely where the projects are located and project descriptions that mm -hmm. describe the work um, for all three of these projects. I can certainly share those with the board. I know Commissioner yeah. Savas has seen those. Um, and yeah, it, I mean, it, <clears throat> it is a conversation about <clears throat> do we kickstart these projects <clears throat> and, um, and get them in the pipeline to get funded? Or do we kind of kick the can down the road and talk about it in the context of a five-year capital improvement plan and the rate increases for our, our surface water customers that would be associated with these projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to understand the options and the consequences. You know, what is the, I don't like to hear about stormwater, you know, flooding, all of those things, but to get a better sense of what, what's the cost benefit analysis and the need for moving forward. I would like to understand that better. I mean, the libraries, I totally get. I, we've, we've been really um, educated on that, but on these, it's, it's ones that we haven't been briefed on. So I would suggest that we hold on this until we see the big picture of the system improvement plan, master plan. Oh. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, I just would like to uh, address some of uh, Commissioner Fisher's concerns. Um, this topic, uh, these homes that are flooding under heavy rains has been going on for decades. And these people, you probably heard me mention, a lot of them at the sandbag, their homes. And that's quite unfortunate in the urban area. Uh, it doesn't make Christmas or Thanksgiving very much fun when you're sandbagging. Um, and water, there's water intrusion on your property and water intrusion into your home as well. And um, for all these reasons and the fact that it's specifically listed as ARPA eligible in a stronger way than perhaps it does for libraries, um, you know, broadband is also strongly listed as a, uh, a, a viable, uh, specifically listed item for eligibility for the ARPA dollars. Uh, we have discussed it several times here, so uh, you might, may not recall, but I do know, I sure know that Greg's been before us several times when you've been talking about this, and I've put a lot of pressure on, and other people in the area who live there have put a lot of pressure on. Um, happy to take you there um, sometime and look at it. Um, the w wet season's coming and happy to just bring your boots and hip waders and we'll go through there. Yeah, Commissioner Savas, I'm always happy to go on field trips and that is really a good thing to do in, in regards to these specific areas and these projects. We have this much of an information. It's this much on each project. So <clears> for today, I'm not prepared to say, yeah, I want to dedicate ARPA dollars there, but I'm really interested in learning more. And you know what, I'm, bet, I'm guessing I'll probably be convinced that we need to move forward with this. Yeah, of course, this list has been out for a week, available to commissioners who could have requested additional information at any time. And, and getting back to this stormwater situation, I've been out to people's homes in these neighborhoods, and, and they look urban, they look like cities, but they're unincorporated Clackamas County. And they have pleaded, pleaded 
with somebody to do something. Either it's Oak Grove Water Authority, either it's WES or Tri-Cities, who has jurisdiction. Um, and it is just a horrid situation for some of these homeowners. We have, we've, and down the road from one place I visited, they're totally sandbagged. You go down the road around the corner, brand new homes that people bought flooded, brand new. And so we need to ad start addressing some of this infrastructure uh, situation in Clackamas County. And thankfully, we have the ARPA dollars to do it. And um, Greg, thank you for identifying five top projects. And once we get this done, more are probably gonna pop up, but we'll keep chipping away at it what we can. We have other commissioners in the queue. Commissioner uh, Schrader, you're up. Yeah, I just want to um, give a shout out to Water and Environment Services. I actually believe they're one of the best run departments that we have uh, under our purview as a district. And of course, uh, I am serving this, as Commissioner Savas has served, I am now serving uh, as a liaison to that, so I regularly am attending the meetings with the advisory board. It is a superior advisory board. Uh, they're quite remarkable. And I have such faith in this organization and in their ability uh, to really do, I think, one of the key services that we have, other than libraries, which I'll talk about in a minute, I hope. If you give Go me ahead. That, you don't have the floor right now. Uh, that I, I, I really believe that any, uh, any project they bring forward is well worth funding with ARPA dollars. They're diligent. They do their work. Uh, they're professionals. And uh, thank you, Greg, for uh, everything you do to keep uh, clean water here. Um, I would like to make a comment about libraries as well. Um, I'll start with a quote. My favorite quote is from Louise, George Louise Borges, which is, I have always imagined that paradise will be a kind of library. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Einstein also weighed in uh, when he said, the only thing that you absolutely have to know is the location of the library. Albert Einstein. There's lots of library quotes that way, and we all know about Andrew Carnegie, who was the architect of the library system in our entire nation, and how he put all his dollars, his money, uh, his wealth towards making sure that people had uh, equal and free access to information. Um, so I am very pleased to see uh, both libraries on, uh, on this list. Uh, I support them. There's nothing more that we can do, I think, to benefit our public in many ways than to make sure that they have open access to information. It is not just books. It's any kind of media, even, the, even I think, a library of things now that we have that allows people to access it. Librarians are professionals who have training. They just don't check books in and out. They have uh, areas of expertise that they study, they have specialty areas, they're either young adults, uh, adult librarians. They're the purveyors, I think, and the guardians of knowledge uh, in this country. And I'm just gonna uh, mention something personal now because it was very moving to me. Um, I had the opportunity recently to go to Ireland. And one of the reasons I went to Ireland was because uh, Trinity College in Dublin was on my list to see. And there in the long room of their library, um, surrounded with all these ancient texts, is, as you know, the Book of Kells, 800 AD. It is the repository of one of the most brilliant, elegant, artistic codas uh, in Western civilization. Um, and it is there to view and truly um, it was, uh, of all everything that I had get to see in the beautiful country of Ireland, um, that was the high point was to go into the long room and see the texts and see all those ancient books there uh, for everyone to see. So I will also say that I also believe that libraries have the potential to be holy places for us as well. So with that, um, I do hope colleagues that we will support um, both libraries. I think it will be well worth it. I think that it will be important for our communities. Uh, I think the two facilities will serve uh, every piece of that population well um, as well. 
And also, I'm a real believer in the livestock barn, too. I have to tell you, we have to have that for emergency management and for our agriculture and for our rural areas. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. There's three other commissioners in the queue. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, um, Mr. Geis, thank you uh, for your work. Uh, I was down there for a tour. Millions of gallons going through that facility every day and not one leak. That's commendable. My next question is for Nancy Bush, yes. if I may. Okay. On the Gladstone Library, you recommend $6 million mm -hmm. in ARPA money. Will that build the library? No, it will not build the library. That $6 million figure actually came from a, a, what we at the county were planning on putting into bonds. And as I, I described earlier before, not everything in the library is eligible for ARPA. Right. So it will not build the library. Okay. So my next question is, what is the max amount ARPA rules allow for the Oak Lodge Library? So I think that $9 million is probably the max. I don't Probably. think we're gonna get, we we won't get I don't I we have to look more closely at design and and do some assessment, and whenever we start approaching that ten million dollar mark, um, I think it's going to become very difficult to pass an audit, and um, because ten million and at ten million dollars for ARPA when you get over that mark, there is a lot more scrutiny, um, the assessment is more difficult. And as is the reporting, as is the, um, if we were to have an audit. And, you know, looking at that with the team, we really think $9 million is probably our max. Probably. Um, Actually, it may be too much. <laughs> oh, is that, correct? is that right? It could be, yeah. Okay. So, one more question on the libraries. Mm -hmm. If $6 million for Gladstone is the, is the best we can do with ARPA dollars, and $9 million is the best we can do with for Oak Lodge? There may be more wiggle room on Gladstone, but not a lot. Um, I think between another 500, maybe 500,000 more there. But all of this is really hard to really determine until we've done real assessments, we have these projects up and running. But I think we are pretty much at our max for those libraries. Okay, so let me understand this. What, what you're recommending today, you've got your 28 million and change here for uh, brick and mortar projects that you recommend the board approve today. If we approve this, then who's going to go back and f and determine the exact amount we could give to these two libraries? I, I noticed that on your chart here, you got 12 million dollars uh, available from the current 41 million and. Uh, 19 million allocated, but not distributed from this ARPA money. So, the so I'm sorry. Well, so my, my point, my, my, where I'm getting to is this. I, I, I want to know what the maximum amount of dollars we can provide for the two libraries from ARPA dollars. And if that's, if that amount is approved today, then what, what happens? What do you as the county operations officer do to determine if we can put a little bit more money into those libraries? So the answer to that is that the other, I would work with the team with DTD as you know, well as myself and others that are working on ARPA and we would have to, and someone from county council, and we'd have to go through, um, you know, looking at the plans, we have to figure out square footage, what, is that, what it costs per square footage, um, we have to figure out the broadband piece, what is it going to cost for broadband, all of those things have to be assessed and reported on. And that would be a team that does that, okay? And until that is really done and we are moving into this project more and more, I won't know for sure, you know, how much. What we have here, there's a couple things going for the Oak Lodge in particular, there's a couple things going on. Um, go, going over 10 million, I think is going to be really hard to defend. And so I think we're at the cap. Can I guarantee it? No. But, okay. I, but given the knowledge we have right now, yes. Okay. And then also please remember on Gladstone Library, we already gave them $200,000.
and they okay. they did design with it. So actually, if you did approve this, they would have 6.2 million. That'll pay for the doorknob. Okay, uh, one one more question for you. So if we approve the amounts you recommend today, it, looking at your pie chart here, do you feel that there is potentially more money that we can move to these libraries after you do your assessment? I think I think there's a stronger potential for Gladstone and less so for Oak Lodge. Okay. For what the information I have today. Okay, so this is the best we can do for today? It is. Okay, thank you. Um, since we're on the library subject, I know there's three other commissioners that want to talk, but I want to insert something here. Um, Commissioner Schrader makes the point equal and free access to libraries for information, but that also includes the internet. <clears throat> yes. Wouldn't it have been nice if we had modern libraries with a huge amount of internet service when our schools were shut down? So parents didn't have to pack the children or go to a Starbucks and then overload their system. And that's how I'm looking at the, the technology that goes into this. Unfortunately, ARPA does not pay for computers. And that's one of the things I asked. I wanted to buy a whole bunch of computers for y'all out there to use, but ARPA does not do that either. I also need to make the point, and y'all need to understand this, $15 million has been given to libraries. That is the largest allocation of ARPA to anything, and we have had requests to spend this money a hundred different times. Also, if this is not enough money, don't think we're going to go back to the pot and put ourselves in a situation where if we don't follow the U.S. Treasury guidelines, not only do we have to pay the money back, you're going to give it back to me to pay back if we don't follow, and the penalty. That is why it has taken us so long, and that is why these numbers have come out the way they are for construction progress processes. Commissioner Schrader from NACO has said nationwide, NACO recommends our national organization that most of the ARPA money be spent on sticks and bricks to be safe. So there that is. Um, another thing, if the library groups that I see some of you are in the room, if you do not think this is enough money, I will submit to you, you already have the land. In Concord's place, you already have a building. If it's not enough money, you need to look within yourselves and possibly do a bond in your local area, and we could submit that to the voters next year. We have $12 million left. There are more needs out there. I'm not sure how those are going to be filled, but on this list, there's something for everybody. We've tried to do touch points of our important and the greatest needs throughout the county. So with that in mind, I think we have Commissioner Fisher up next. Thank you. Hey, I just want to say big shout out to Kimberly DeSantis, who's giving me these awesome fact sheets on the West projects that are really filling me in on the real life. Oh, and you have them right with you? Oh, anyway, I've got them on my email. So I'm really enjoying getting the, the, the nitty gritty. So hopefully we'll be able to be able to read, very well done, Greg Geist. But I have a question for Nancy. Um, where is the WIC facility? You said you're working on a lease. Where is the, Not where will it be located? And so where's, it's moving from, here to somewhere, and okay. where is that place? Okay, so WIC is not, we're not working on a lease for WIC. WIC is going to be moving into the PSB, and they're going to be co-located with social services. Okay, you know, I actually knew that. I'm so sorry to have asked you that again, but for some reason I got confused when you said there was a lease. Oh, the lease is for uh, behavioral health. Oh, behavioral health, and we already know all about that, so I don't need to question yeah. that. Now, Chair Smith said something that really concerned me, and I just... I have to ask this question. She said that in these areas where these projects are being proposed, there are new homes that have been built where there is storm water that is causing flooding. And how can it be that new homes, when you go through with our modern day awareness mm. of land and what should be permitted and built, how can that be that new homes are being flooded? 
and that we're now having to go back and repair. Right. And, and I would say relatively new. Um, so the, the, our rules and standards have been in place since the mid-1990s. So anything before that, you didn't have the same level of scrutiny. So a lot of that area was developed in the 50s and 60s and 70s, and there have been some um, later... And which, which areas specifically are you talking about? Well, let me point oh. a clarification. I would not focus on all this new uh, development. There's two lots here where a new home was built because mm -hmm. it's a flag lot. And there's two lots here, you know, five <coughs> miles down the road. My point is even some of the newer homes that have been come in and approved. So we're not talking about huge uh, subdivisions. Okay, thank you. Then I don't have further questions. So I think Chair Smith clarified but. That was an issue issue spotter for me. It's like, oh my gosh, what do we need to do to make sure that new construction isn't being built? Well, even if there are new homes on flag lots, I mean, if there's going to be excess flooding, I would hope we would be able to foresee that and make sure that when the home is being built, the proper drainage is being yes, absolutely. permitted. absolutely, and yep. you're right. And, and uh, we, we do have that in place now, and okay. you will be seeing a complete rewrite of our rules and regulations before the end of the year, and we're actually updating some of those standards um, in conjunction with home builders and the community. So I, I think we're going to be in a good place moving forward and you will have an opportunity to review that. Great, thank you. I wanted to just also make a comment about, you know, moving forward with the <coughs> library um, process. And I appreciate Chair Smith's comments because it seems in many ways in a lot of different, not just libraries and not just other like C800 or this or that, that, you know, we're not, we can't be always the bank that everybody's coming back to the county <laughs> to be the bank. But I just have to say, these are really different, difficult times and they're, un we can't anticipate what's going to happen in the future. And I would say that at least from my perspective, I have a commitment to working with community groups for whatever unanticipated thing comes up, to try to just problem solve and come together and figure out a best path forward. I don't wanna say that I would say that this board won't consider whatever challenges there are in working together. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I spent a lot of time going over these projects in the last few days, and so I have a pretty good idea of where we are with all of them, and I feel comfortable with each and every one of them. And I do appreciate the questions, Nancy, and the clarification, the answers you've given, and the clarification uh, as it relates to the libraries in particular. You know, we've had a funding strategy. We have money set aside, substantial money set aside for these projects, and it's been my understanding that we had a funding strategy for these libraries and by using these ARPA dollars, it really relieves the general fund of a lot of future um, burdens, if you will, and reduces it. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know that this, you know, my, my understanding and the intention I have here today is I know that this, again, relieves the general fund and relieves some obligations, but that the funding strategies that we have to fund these are still in place. All those dollars that have been set aside, perhaps any future, future strategies that be, need to be employed will be um, a lot less of a burden should they need to be employed than, than currently by funding this. So, uh, Chair, if you are ready, I'm prepared to make a motion. I have another person in the key, okay. and then I will call on you, Commissioner Savas. Thank you. Commissioner Schrader, you're up. Yeah, I just uh, want to uh, mention that back in 2008, um, I had the opportunity to work on that library district piece. Uh, and um, libraries are, are very, very popular. So if we need to look at other funding strategies as well as ARPA, uh, I would be more than willing to dig out my old materials, get down to work. Are you looking at me? And do, I'm looking at you because <laughs> I'm going to do it. Because I'm going to do it. Do whatever this you up. want, Commissioner Schrader. I know, I know. <laughs> but I will, I will commit now to our library community. If we need to uh, do the magic we did back in 2008, we can do that. And uh, I'll be there 100% with all of you guys. So, yeah. so don't worry. We yep. will we'll manage it. But uh, it's been my experience when it comes to libraries, people always are in support. I've never worked on a library issue where there hasn't been 100% before across the board in this county. So let's keep that going. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Fisher. 
<laughs> yeah, I just want to clarify. I'm really excited to see the improvements on the county fairgrounds, but we've had a lot of talk as we look at resiliency and disaster preparedness and how we uh, go forward in the future. And I'm just hoping for just a little bit more detail on the thinking behind this and how this will help us with our emergency preparedness and resiliency. So, uh, just to let you know that resiliency and preparedness for disasters is not part of ARPA. Mm -hmm. However, but, yes, I know that. Yeah, but. so I just want to make sure you mm -hmm. know everyone's clear that we can't fund those types of things uh, other than COVID. But yes, definitely the that new structure would be help with other issues. Um, you know, we every you know it's like fire or flooding, almost a couple times a year we see animals that have to be housed at that facility. So there is a lot of of um, to gain from that multi-purpose building that is not just about COVID. So, and yeah, we'll, I'll be, be happy to work with, with Daniel on that too. I think already, he already has a lot of stuff on that and what it would help them with. Who does? Daniel Nybauer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have seen over the years the multiple use of the fairgrounds and known about the need for yeah. improvements. I'm really happy to see this on this list that we can Get this done. This is exciting, you guys. It is, and we're going to entertain a motion, and everybody's done talking. So, <laughs> Commissioner Savas, you're up. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, it, we have we have spent years on a number of these projects, uh, and I know there's been a lot of people involved um, and people that have been suffering uh, when it comes to some of the stormwater issues we talked about. But all these projects are good projects, um, and I'm just, we have this once in a lifetime opportunity to move forward with this. Uh, our folks that have met for years and years and years and years, um, both in Gladstone and Oak Lodge, Jenny's Lodge on the library. So uh, this really is going to help these projects along and going to expedite that. So it gives me great pleasure to make uh, the motion that, uh, uh, Chair, I move that we approve the staff recommendation option one to fully allocate the above capital projects with ARPA dollars. Second. Commissioner Savas has moved that we fully allocate to the capital projects use of ARPA dollars as presented by staff and in the memo, Commissioner Fisher has seconded that motion. <coughs> Dare I ask, any further discussion? <laughs> oh, Chair Smith. Oh, no, I know, just yeah, kidding. that's okay. No, that's fine. You know, this has been a long time coming. We've all wanted this. There's something in it for everybody. We have $12 million left to figure out what to do with. You know, make your uh, ideas known to staff as we move forward to this. Thank you very much. Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Schrader? With pleasure. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Savas? Aye. Chair Smith? A very happy day. Aye. 5 0. Thank you. <laughs> Gary, what's up next? That is the conclusion of your sessions today. Seeing no further business before this board, we are adjourned. <laughs>